So, um, hello, everyone. Um, the <clears throat> uh, as opposed to our usual meetings where we go through, uh, you know, design and ops and dev and engineering and marketing and whatnot. Um, this is a little bit of a different one. We we you know usually when we get on a call, we kind of shoot the breeze for like five minutes maybe and just like talk about ourselves and whatnot. Um, this time, I wanted to do a telephone update just with us. You know, um, <clears throat> part of that was because I got I was thinking about doing like a video update to all of the artists um, and that made me so nervous and I don't know why like because I love being in front of people you know I love that um, but for some reason it made me really nervous so I'm glad that you guys are doing this with me for the first time um, one aspect of it is that we're trying to you know make people working on this game and all the artists involved uh, more real to each other, like actual real human beings living in various places. Um, another aspect of it is that um, I think because I send out all the, the emails for the most part, um, it makes it seem like I'm the face of the project, which is not actually true. Like, it's a lot of people working on it. And it's a lot of artists working on it. And making it about one person is sort of a liability for us in terms of trying to create some sort of sustainable community. So, uh, yeah, just wanted to hang out and ask you questions that may not necessarily... I mean, we've got a ton of other things to work on, um, but I just wanted to talk about the project and, like, your thoughts about it. So that's what we're going to do. Um, let's see what I've got on my list. Yes, actually, this, this is a good one. Um, and, and anyone can call out uh, on this one. What's been, like, the biggest surprise of working on this game so far? What, what's been, the, like, the, the, the strangest, most interesting thing? For you. Hey, are we are we recording right now? Is this recording? Yeah, man, I'm recording. Okay, I'm gonna mute my mic real quick. So what? What, um, what do you think? Yeah, I can go first. Um, I feel like one of the sillier ones is when we get art in, and the artist looks nothing like you would expect. Um, so like I'll spend time really considering someone's art and I create this mental picture of what I think someone might look like and then we get their profile picture in and like it will be like a beautiful like sensuous like intimate like painting of the countryside and then it comes from like a jacked surgeon in Ohio and it's just like totally <laughs> not at all what I thought you know this person might look like um, like some of my favorite like most touching you know, like, tear-worthy poems come from, like, cantankerous grandpas in Virginia. Like, it's just, you never really know what you're going to get in. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, everyone's gorgeous, you know, everyone's absolutely beautiful, but it's just really funny because sometimes you create this sort of mental picture that doesn't really match up to the product. Do you ever feel like, like, less that fair, like, the person got, like, in the genetic lottery and then the skills? <laughs> yeah, like, oh, we have such beautiful gorgeous like musicians where I'm like oh not only can you play the flute and the harp but you look like a goddess like totally totally unfair no but that's always a fun little surprise that seeing people's locations is also always a wonderful surprise just like creating a mental map of like who someone might be out in the world making these things that's a fun one well, in looking at the statistics on our back end, it looks like we're about 65% jacked surgeons. So <laughs> we're, doing, we're doing good on the just, just totally ripped surgeons front. I think we need more data on that. Like everybody submits their, like, um, their fitness app information. That way we can correlate skill level to actual like health. 
<laughs> no, I just put a checkbox on the forum. It's Are You a Jack Surgeon? It's the only time <laughs> awesome. Uh, anyone else? Any like surprises? Like things that you did not expect coming into this work? I think. Um, oh, one. I was just gonna say I was surprised by how we all just kind of. We all just started hanging out together, and it was like we've been friends all along. That was that was my big surprise. I, it just it just made us all one big family. And we're you, know what the, you know what they say? It's not the project that you create. Along, it's not the project they create. It's the friends that you make along the way. Matt. <laughs> is that is that a Mark Twain quote? <laughs> I think so. You're spoiling the launch where there's no actual art and the website just says friendship. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, uh, Matt, going along with that, I mean, I should point out that uh, I have only met two of you in person, which that is very strange to me. I, I guess I've never worked on a project like that before where I've only met in person to people that I'm working with. I mean, do you, what what's the over under? What's what's the odds that we'll ever all meet each other? What do you think? A hundred percent. Yeah. To make it happen. <laughs> We're all gonna vacation in Barbados. <laughs> Caitlin ought to be there. <laughs> We can all go to Texas and float down the river together. Yeah. (laughs) Hypothetically speaking, let's say we do somehow get together, everybody, who's bringing what to the party? That's a good question. (laughs) Hold on, I don't see my face until we get really good answers. I'm going to bring booze and baked goods. Contribute to any party. Yeah, I'm always really good at bringing boxed wine. If there's a campfire, um, I could bring the Dutch oven I have, and my partner's gotten really good at making cobbler in the Dutch oven over a fire. So I could could do that. I'm gonna bring Trivial Pursuit. <laughs> Everyone loves a fun game of Trivial Pursuit at a party, right? Yeah, well, I mean, but in these times, in these very difficult times, it seems like we should bring, like, important pursuit, like, I don't know. <laughs> you know, rather than trivial. That, yeah. I don't know. I, well, uh, how, so, okay, go around the horn and just, like, say where you're from or where you are right now um, and how like lockdown quarantine is working out for you where you are i mean how how, how's that working out i i will start i'm in seattle and um it's a gorgeous day today as opposed to when um the smoke what made it impossible to go outside um and so it's a relief that it's just gorgeous and clear outside um but i have not seen physically like been in proximity with another human being since uh, Saturday. So it's just, yeah, it's weird. It's very isolated. Um, this is like the most social contact I've had in since Saturday. So who else? I'll go. Not very good geographical diversity here, but I'm also yeah. in Seattle. <laughs> But uh, I, I feel more locked down this week than most because I developed a cough this week, so I'm, like, a little freaked out about it. Um, and I got, like, a COVID test two days ago, so I'm waiting on the results of that. I don't think I have it, but I feel like this, like, the pandemic has been me riding a bunch of waves of, like, is this cough it or is this allergies, like, over and over and over again? And I'll, like get really cavalier about my attitude and be like, okay, well, we're going on a hike or like, okay, I'm going to do a social distance meetup with some friends at the park. Uh, But like, I still keep having these like cyclical moments where I'm like, I, do I have it? Do I have it? (laughs) Um, And that feeling paired with like watching the world do this whole like opening, closing, opening, closing thing. I feel like I'm just like riding this like wave. 
and also looking at all of the graphs that look like waves. Mm -hmm. Like it just feels like it feels like this motion. Mm -hmm. So, did they give you a? Because uh, I've had to take a few of those recently. Did they give you a a um, like a sheet with a QR code? Nothing. No, I just got like a, they didn't, I didn't even get the one uh, that like goes back into my brain. This is the right. second one I've done because I got a test after I participated in the protests a couple of months ago. It mm -hmm. wasn't months ago. Oh my God, what date is it? So I got a test after that just to make sure that like, I, I have a cough generally, but my partner was like worried about it. So uh, he was just like, you're coughing more than usual. Um, so uh, yeah, I just went in, I didn't have to do it myself or anything, but they just like scrubbed the very front of my nostrils yeah it's always those are like weird few days when you're waiting for the uh the results back yeah. yeah i keep checking my app how's it there out in new york uh i know they were closing down a little bit and opening up and closing down yeah i feel like it's the same thing the same here as anywhere else except like three times as expensive <laughs> <laughs> Totes. I mean, do you guys go out? I mean, do you, are you going to the bodegas and the stores and whatnot? Yeah, I mean, you gotta buy groceries and stuff. You know, there's there's people in the parks. There's there's people out. Most of them are in masks. Um, you just you know, you can go out. You just can't go in. Our school. Was it been there yet? I think they just opened. Yeah, uh, like in person. Yeah, it, like some percent capacity, I think. Um, like kids go in like once a week or something. I'm still so jealous. <laughs> How's it in Barbados? How's it in Barbados, Caitlin? You literally just ran away from the virus. You got out. Congratulations. I just ran off. Um, I'm, well, I'm pretty sure I already had it at some point, um, because I was in India at the beginning of the year in February. I was in Asia in February and I got pretty sick, um, towards the end of my time in India. And, uh, and so I needed to get an antibody test really, but no, yeah, I was in Austin. Um, my partner woke up one day and was like, Hey, let's move to Barbados because we can. And then we did. Um, and here it's really crazy how different it is than in the U.S. because you're able to go out and do things, but they're very stringent about it here, and people are super on board because there's only about 250,000 people on the island. It's really small. And so, like, if you want to go to a gas station, you have to wear a mask. There's a guy guarding the door who makes sure that you wear a mask. He then takes your temperature at the door makes you write down your name and phone number for contact tracing, and then makes you sanitize your hands. Every single time you go into a restaurant, a gas station, anywhere, you have to do this. And so anytime that, like, there's even a scare, they have immediate contact tracing, and, like, everything is, like, really quickly mapped out. So, like, the world is pretty much open to you again, but you do... And, and it's crazy because people don't lose their minds. They don't flip out. Like, everyone is super on board with it, and it becomes just, like, a part of your routine where you're just, like... Yep, this is it. Like, I just keep my temperature every time I want to drink, like, a margarita or whatever. Um, but it's, it's, it's great that they're doing That's the right way to do it, right? You know? And if when we came into the country, we had to quarantine for five days in a hotel room, no leaving. Like, all of our food had to be dropped outside of our door, like, had to stay in the hotel room for the whole time. And then we had to, like, test multiple times. So it's super, super stringent, but um, definitely for the best. And, uh, yeah, they're definitely they're doing it right here. So, Kelly, uh, what's it like where you are? Tell, tell us where you are and, and what, what, what it's like. Yeah, um, so that sounds like a dream, Caitlin. I didn't realize you had just packed it up and moved to Barbados. Like, it's amazing. Um, I'm in the Piedmont, North Carolina, um, in a small city called Burlington, sandwiched between Durham and Greensboro and Chapel Hill where everything is, oh, well, not all open. Things are like half capacity as of Friday. They went into stage three reopening. So we have the opposite going on as Caitlin's experience. There's a lot of people doing things that you shouldn't be doing, but they're doing them with the full support of our leadership. 
Um, so like just like lick, licking all the doorknob handles or what? Like what? Like just licking the doorknob handles and just like... Yeah. 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 No, they just reopen so like bars and restaurants can seat inside and bars can seat outside now. Movie theaters are open at half capacity. Um, masks are required, but there's no enforcement of it. The county I live in is um, pretty friggin' conservative. Like, I was going to the protest. I went to one a couple weeks ago, and, like, the cops were wearing masks, but, like, the sheriff wasn't, and neither were the white supremacists yelling at us. Um, <laughs> so, like, there's just a hotbed of mess. Um, it's a fun story. Look up Alamance County, North Carolina, y'all. National news lately. Um, <laughs> but it's just, like, a lot of cases. The universities, like UNC and NC State, opened and then shut down and went off campus. The private university is still open. It's just a lot of bad decisions on this side of the continent. Go Tar Heels or Duke or something. That just blows <laughs> my mind that any college campus at all is open because I'm just like, the number of people whose mouths I put directly on my mouth, you know what I mean? In college, like, it's just like, this is not a safe environment. Like, college kids... Do not make smart decisions. Caitlin, no, this is not, not that sort of a podcast here. This is not yeah, that. Yeah. We're not. We're not getting into that. But Sean, <laughs> how, Sean, how, how how are we doing in uh, uh, Texas? Um, kind of similar, I think, to Kelly's situation. Yeah. Uh, it's. I mean, it's pretty open, but I think bars are still closed. You have to be making like more than fifty percent of your revenue from food to stay open here in Austin. Hmm. So it's like something, and you know, of course venues aren't hosting shows or anything like that, but I've been out like in the park with friends, which has been nice. And I actually went to a wedding on Sunday, which was kind of scary, but you know, but my friends wanted to do it. They'd already postponed it once and they were like, come if you feel comfortable. People wore masks mostly but you know we'll see I don't, I don't know how it'll go but that's the riskiest thing I think I've done personally um, other than that it's been you know masks and doors all the time not really doing too much besides having people over into the backyard to watch movies oh that sounds nice I can get into that so yeah okay yeah. so let's let's turn so that's like kind of where some of us are at in terms of this just weird historical moment. And I do feel as though like the difficulty of this time is going to make it, oh, uh, bless you, Ben. Um, so it, it's going to make it so that um, this is like a weird time capsule kind of that we're creating in, in a way. I mean, all of the works that will have been created for this project will be within the time span of this pandemic, which is a historic event. And it's from people all over the world, right? But some, some people might even say unprecedented. Uh, yeah. If that, I hear that, that word again, I'm going to throw up. Yeah, that's, that word sucks. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but... Um, this question now is for, uh, Ben and Matt. So we're starting to, uh, build out the actual exhibition itself, which we plan to launch in, uh, 2021 in spring. Um, and hopefully get a ton of people to come and visit. Um, right now, what in your mind seems like the most difficult aspects of actually like the, the technical aspects of, of building this exhibition? Well, I think Ben already did everything. So it's, so it's all me now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess, uh, I mean, there are like some individual pieces of this that are going to be challenging to work out. Like the, visualizing the map of all of these works uh, and actually putting that all together is going to be 
an interesting challenge, uh, half because, well, it's just it's, a, it's an enormous amount of data to represent in some visual graphic, and uh, partially because we, we don't know exactly what the final thing is even going to look exactly like yet. So uh, the map is definitely something that, you know, it's going to be it's going to be a challenge to shake it out and do a really good job um and i think like another part for me is it's maybe more of the design challenge but uh kind of balancing how you present this information to the user like whether you really uh try and present it as the the telephone experience themselves whether they are this person experiencing it as an artist might have experienced it, or whether you're really kind of trying to show them this topographical view of all of the art and kind of see how everything tied together. So, uh, yeah, those are the challenges on my mind. I think we had a really interesting challenge that we sort of tackled at the very beginning too when we first started discussing this um, around how to make this like a, um, a sort of just like stable and self-contained artwork almost, you know, like kind of like a, a painting that you can just hang on a wall or something and not like a, a living site that has to be maintained by like a team of programmers and has to like, you know, where you would have like volunteers rotating in and out of it forever. Um, and so I think Matt really did a lot of uh, a lot of work on his end um, already to try to come up with a system where, you know, instead of like code being actively interpreted, it's all sort of pre-compiled and and cashed out and like so this is going to kind of come together to something that that can live on essentially forever without being maintained as well thought that was a really cool thing that we we're able to do what's your cat's name this is shadow what's up shadow <laughs> um all right oh my god i have what? a cat that looks exactly like that ben i'm gonna find pumpkin <laughs> Wait a second. oh is that pumpkin well okay but come back soon because actually that dovetails very nicely into um, the next thing that I wanted to ask, which is this is for Ramon and for Sergio and for Jen. I mean, uh, like like your job as UX designers is to like <laughs> oh that is oh my gosh that totally they could be siblings. Who's pumpkin? Ada looks right into the camera. <laughs> cat model. Oh my gosh, pumpkin! <laughs> you and New it's you in New York. Pumpkin does not look into the camera. So, the designers on this project, you guys, your your job is to figure out um, how to intuitively present this the the experience of this exhibition to all of the visitors that are, are going to come here. So, so you're designing like the pages and you're designing like <coughs> how you move through from one work of art to another and all that kind of stuff. I mean, from your point of view, what, what are you finding to be the most difficult things to easily convey to like, like what's the struggle right now in, on the design side? Jen, did you want to tackle it first, or you want me to go? Yeah, sure. I similar like um, thoughts than that. Map has. I'm working on the map next, and I've like been sketching it out on my iPad and like doing these little like thought experiments about it. And it's just so vast um, that I've been really thinking. And it takes a really long time to build. Like even just for me to prototype it in Figma or something, um, or even to sketch out. There's so many nodes. Um, on the piece that I know that I'm just eventually going to have to tackle this like chunk by chunk. Um, and like, I, there's so much to unpack about it. Like how will people interact with it? How will, um, how does somebody want to navigate around it? Um, we have all of, we have a lot of ambiguous concepts and this is always kind of like the scariest, most exciting part of a project for me is where, everything is still really ambiguous and you're not really quite sure what it's going to look like. And then you really start to like, like one of my favorite, um, like one of the mottos I live by is like, if you're going to eat the elephant, start at the tail. Like when something like this feels so big, 
you should just like chunk it out and like eat the elephant piece by piece and all of a sudden you've eaten the elephant so like that's how I feel about the map I'm just going to have to start tackling it chunk by chunk and making out making like decisions really quickly about like what shape is the node how much uh, information are we giving to the user at first glance Node by node, um, are we conveying any information through color? Are we conveying any information through um, stroke weight? Um, do we have like a wayfinding you are here sort of interaction? Um, there's just like a lot of really small <laughs> decisions to make that I just need to start eating the elephant. Um, that's, that's like the biggest thing on my mind. I think it's definitely the biggest challenge. The other one is always at the beginning of a project where you're trying to figure out like aesthetically what sh this should look like. Cause that's like a whole nother, we've already done that, which is great. That's like a huge thing to tackle. Um, and like, it becomes more important the higher the fidelity gets as the design goes along. But like, it's really great. I feel really relieved that we've already kind of made that decision um, so that we like don't have to like keep relitigating that. Cause sometimes you can really get into the weeds with even just like the visual direction and the aesthetic direction. And, but we've taken care of that, and now we can just talk about, like, the real meat of the interaction, which is the website, um, which is great. Yeah, I, I concur with a lot of those points. Like, how do you show the scale of this? You know, like, this is so massive. Like, it's like walking into it, that warehouse at the end of Indiana Jones with all those mystery packages you know like oh what's this you know let's how do we navigate to that you know how do we tell someone how to go and let them free and let them explore and you know i'm glad jen had the foresight at the beginning of this to like get us all together and talk about what we'd all like to see and what our mood board would look like if we were to imp implement it you know the other aspect of this is like uh you know, helping Sergio along, that's also been fun at, at, on the personal level. Uh, and then interacting with everyone else, like Matt, like, put out some really good feedback on, like, the filters and the artist search. I mean, I'm like, oh, boy, you know. But it's a fun, it's a fun challenge being put into deep water and and treading it and, and then, you know, hopefully getting to where you need to be by the end of the process. Sergio? Well, uh, you got to unmute yourself, boss. You're muted. I got to hop off there, you guys, too. Um, it's right. nice seeing everyone tonight. Bye, Jen. Bye-bye. Uh, I think maybe the most challenging thing for me is sort of coming, is is, is understanding that it, it is quite big, you know, as Ramon's saying, and as if we all know, but also, like, knowing that I have been given such sort of a small piece of that. And it, I've been finding it just to be a challenge. Um, you know, I, I think where, where I struggle with it is not really knowing like where, like what I'm, what I'm allowed to like change or, or do if I, if I rounded this corner here, you know, would that, make a significant difference is that something I can do you know so, so, I, I, <laughs> so really it's like like I know it's such a it's such a huge project and I know I need to learn a lot and I and I just by simply giving me that the, the task that's been given to me I I still know that there's a lot of development that I need to do but no I I, I enjoy this project and and one of his questions earlier was like is that I thought was really neat is that I didn't realize how big it was. You know, when Ramon invited me to take part, like I, I really didn't know until now I know we're working with a team all across the U S and other areas of the world. And you know, there's artists from all over, which is, it's pretty neat. But yeah, I think that, that, that that's my struggles, not having a lot of um, education and, and just trying to learn. I know. You're doing a great job, Sergio. I was actually working on everything this morning. So uh, the next question then is for... Um, you know, oh. to top off the design talk, it's like, it's always changing. It's always, you know, like, 
the best feedback I have ever gotten was like, you know, just listen because every point is valid. You know, like I can't possibly think of every angle. And when Matt points out, like, well, how do you do this? And I'm like, ugh, how do you do that? Well, let me get back to you. Let me go sketch something out. Just this afternoon, or actually yesterday evening, we I showed Nathan the the back button. Or I thought I finished the back button. He's like, no, no, you need a back button. I'm like, well, we are. This is a back button. He's like, no, 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 you need a back button. I'm like, oh, back button. <laughs> so I, I've been working on that. So always keep your ears open. Yeah. Well, the next question then is for uh, um, Caitlin and Kelly and Sean, who are on the off team. So. You guys are you guys are actually running the game, you know what I mean? So so the other half of the team is kind of like building the exhibition and the framework for the way that 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 telephone will be set up, right, and presented um, and interacted with by folk. Um, you're actually like running the game. Like I'm going to assign this art artist to this person, and we're going to catalog it in this way and so on and so forth like like actually tying the pieces together that makes like the connective tissue of this project right um, and I you know starting out just kind of made up some rules that we've been kind of following mostly <laughs> but like if you could there are a million ways that you could actually do this project, right? There, there's so many different possibilities for how you could run a game like this. Um, if you could change any rule or any aspect of this game in terms of the way that it is actually being presented, let's say that another one is done in uh, you know, five years or something like that, and what would you... What would you like to see experimented with or played with? Like, what would you like to see more of or less of? Like, that kind of stuff. How would you change the game? <laughs> Hi. I'll start. I feel like this is largely a Caitlin question because she's, like, kind of the guru of assigning and doing mind maps to see, like, if this person hasn't gotten it back on time, who else can we send something to to keep it moving and doing all of that juggling and magic? But um, thinking about, like, looking back and seeing what I know now at this stage in the game and how I would use that to kind of change something in the future and planning it, I think I would just... Also, I'm, like, a librarian in training, so, like, information and data and, like, having everything sorted and organized is like kind of my go-to, but um, as the person who gets like the emails from people with questions about like, I'm running late, I think, but when's my due date? Like, so I kind of take some of those kind of topics that come up a lot. Like, can I get an extension and how long? Or like, when's the absolute latest I can get this to you by? And like trying to make that more clear in the, beginning and so like the way I think about that and like shaping the game would be even like kind of we have like a little bit of a loose structure with people and like how they'd have this amount of time in round one versus round two and our like we know our internal goal dates a little bit but I think that having like a more structured representation of that could like make it just more clear to everyone involved um, but I think also part of the fun of telephone as someone who participated in it also was like, I didn't know when I was going to get an assignment and it was just kind of like, here's your email. <laughs> Here you go. Um, but yeah, so just thinking about that, but some of the questions I get are often like things about like deadlines, extensions, when's it going to release and like file type and like, how do I submit it to you? So just like being more clear from the get go on some of those things and also structuring the game to represent that. So it's more like we could recruit for like round one participants from like a certain date to a certain date and then like have round two be a different window, things like that. Yep. 
No, and I mean, I love that. I, I think the idea of, like, an FAQ page or, like, an understanding of, like, yeah, this is when something is due back within this time frame. Or, like, yeah, like you said, like, file types. Like, instead of having to email someone back and be like, hey, could you send it as, like, a WAV file type, like, blah, blah, blah. Like, I think that's a great idea, actually, Kelly, and I hadn't even thought of that. So that's fantastic. Or, like, yeah, like, what is what is the next step? And it's, like, the online gallery is going to go up in the spring. Or we're aiming for this time because you get a lot of those questions um, again and again. So I think that's actually a really smart idea. My ideas are, like, silly, fantastical. Like, mine are, like, I... Like, I was telling someone this the other day. Like, I was like, I would love a game that's 20 years long and 20 artists, and each artist has a year. And, like, imagine, you know, like, what that would look like and how life-changing that would be. Like, that would just be insane. Or, like, you know, like, uh, a game that takes a year, and it's 12 artists in each of the different mediums. And we send a poem to a poet every month, a sculpture to, like, a sculptor every month until we have, like, you know, like 15 finished artworks, but going between artists of the same medium month to month, like something like that. And just how like wacky that would look towards the end and just having all of those pieces in place. I think about stuff like that a lot. Um, and just, yeah, all the different ways you could play it. I'm, I'm over here like Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory and Kelly is like, here's a way that we can make life easier for us and our participants. And I'm like, you right. <laughs> You're right, girl. That's that's a very good idea. Yeah, no. Uh, in my mind, I've got like um, I, I could see every single round is a the same form of art. You know what I mean? So like you start with a painting, and then it goes to all painters, and then the next one goes to all musicians. There you would be comparing. You, you would be comparing three musical translations of the same poem, you know what I mean? Whereas right now, from a poem, we have a, uh, you know, we have a photograph and a dance and a, you know, a, a film or something like that, right? So we have three different art forms coming from the same one. It might have been more fruitful to compare three translations in the same art form from from the thing. Maybe that would actually tell us more by comparing those three pieces of music. That might actually tell us more about the translation process than comparing, you know, poetry to music to film to whatever. You know? So so that that's one that I've always thought would be fun. Sean, do you have do you, do you have thoughts on this? Do you think about this stuff? Yeah, I thought a little bit about it. Um, I think I'm somewhere between Caitlin and Kelly on this. Um, I also participated uh, as an artist before joining the ops team, um, so I was thinking of it also um, from the from Caitlin's perspective of like how you could change the mechanics of the game in future editions. But I didn't get real crazy. It, thoughts <laughs> I, I just thought um for me when i appreciate art in almost any form i feel like i need some sort of context to ground myself and that typically is something that is written or is is legible in, in writing somehow or i guess in speaking potentially but in words um whether it's like a museum exhibition or it's a dance like or obviously with music, if it's has lyrics, you know, um, you 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 have something else that's like part of it to like give you some some insight into it. And I I felt like I wish I'd had more of that a little bit as an artist participating because especially with some of the works, it's like the translation is can be so in anything like into any form and there's no context potentially like it doesn't have to be titled it doesn't have to be a thing and so it'll be really cool to see how that evolves over time in this game but like in a future game it could be really cool to like make every artist have to make their own just like one sentence or something to accommodate their own work or like what they thought of the last work that they translated and see how that actual message would shift over time um 
that was my my thought. Well, let now, now Sean, let's stay with you for just a sec. Um, that because that takes me to the next thing, which is like, what are you most what are you most curious to see in terms of how this all plays out? We we're like halfway through, maybe a little bit further than halfway through this game. I mean, and we're not going to publish until uh, spring of 2021, but, like, what are you curious about? Like, what do you wonder? That's what I wonder. Like, the original message, and then just see how it gets interpreted. All right, no spoilers, though. No spoilers on this. <laughs> I, I don't even know, so I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't spoil if I wanted to. Top secret. Yeah. Nathan, do you know how many artists are returning from the previous iteration of Telephone to this iteration? That's a good question. I, I don't have a precise number. Um, probably I could look at the, the um, spreadsheet from the last one and just do like a group search of all of them, but I haven't done that. Uh, I know there's quite a few, you know. I would say, I would say maybe like a sixth a sixth to an eighth of the artists are are from the first game. Um, and for the most part, I just recognize their names. And I'm like, oh, I know you, but how do I know you? And, and then I look at their work and I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember you from five years ago. Um, how about anyone else? What, 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 what are you most curious about in terms of how this whole big, huge thing plays out? I think one more thing would be like how it affects the individual artists. Like, like, hmm. does it help them grow? Like Sean, when you did it, did you like feel like you got more out of it than you put in? Um, yeah, I think so, because, you know, when, especially during COVID, making art, and I make music, you know, it's so solitary, and it, it really felt like I was just doing this, you know, in part as therapy for myself, but also, you know, I'm used to, you know, playing in bands and playing shows and having a community in person to share that with, and so this allowed a way to have that sort of community, even if you're like kind of putting off the, the sharing into the future, but in the immediate term, you're, you're getting something else, someone else's input to help inspire you. And then that's going on to someone else. So that was really cool. <clears throat> I thought that was like more than what I'd get out of just playing by myself. I wonder if there's people that feel self-conscious is like, Oh man, did I do this right or wrong? Oh, you know, because absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. It's the craziest thing. Like, people will write in saying, like, I am so scared that I did this wrong or that I did not interpret this correctly and I am turning in a bad translation or whatever. And firstly, I mean, I don't know exactly how you would categorize a good translation versus a bad translation. That's something that I think about quite a bit um, because... There is such a thing as a bad translation, but it's in so many, it's so complicated and so subjective uh, that generally my response to them all the time is like, geez, don't worry about it. It's a game. Like, it's just, it's just, it's a game. It's, it's a game that children play and you see what happens and don't stress about it. Like, there's enough things in the world to stress about right now. You don't need to be freaking out about whether or not you did it perfectly, right? So, I mean, that that's my take on it. Um, I guess I'm glad that they take it that seriously, uh, but hopefully nobody worries about it that much. Yeah, I, I also played this time around really early on. I played like the first or second month that the game was going, and then after joining on, I looked back at what I made and what I made could not be the more like sideways ish translation like it really kind of went off the rails a little bit and I mean I like what I made like I feel good about it I don't I and I loved making it is the thing like Sean said like it 
gave me something to do and it gave me like a sense of community. Like I was like, I got this piece from someone and I'm going to give my piece back out into the world. And that alone felt good. But yeah, looking back at it, I was like, this is a little wacky. Like <laughs> I kind of took this in a direction, but that's like not the point of the game. You know what I mean? Like the point of the game is to connect and have fun. So well, it's fine. Well, and on the, you know, another aspect for me, I think the first game that was played, like I was laser focused. Oh, Matt loves Ben's cat's tail. That's amazing. Anyway, I was laser focused on uh, translation and the accuracy of translation and trying to find that accuracy everywhere because I felt as though that was the most valuable thing. Um, being able to study the transmission of information from one form of uh, communication to another uh, through different uh, parts of the brain, through different types of expression, etc., cetera, um, different languages. Uh, this time around, I just, I just don't care as much. I just don't care. Like, like when something, when something goes completely in left field, I'm kind of tickled by that actually. Like, and, and interested by it. Like I find it valuable <clears throat> when something goes off in a completely different direction. So, um, you know, yeah. Here, I have a question for Nathan. Let's turn the tables. Oh shit. And the ringleader in iterations one and two, how has it changed you? How has this game changed your 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 outlook on things? How has it wait, say the question again. So how has so, it changed my around, outlook on things? That is a very broad not question. Not things, but like like you just mentioned, like you're you're less stressed about like whether stuff gets done right. I mean how how has the game changed you as a person? Hmm. Well, uh, I guess I'm surprised by how many people want to play and how many people keep signing up to play um, without a ton of effort on our side to, to instigate that. Um, I think that... I guess... Seeing... Seeing information move from one form to another and from one country to another, from one person to another, um, I'm still like fascinated with that. Like I'm like, I want neurobiologists to be studying this and taking our data set and actually like taking it apart as an actual study in how this works because I think of it as like um, a microcosm of how art history works. So ours is like a really, really dumbed down, simplified clinical version of how art history works. Like one thing leads to another, which leads to another, which leads to another. People are influenced one to the next and they take what input they've got and then they translate it and that becomes the new thing and they pass it on. Right? That's how art history works. Um, and same goes for the second half of our game in terms of like synthesizing works because we're always doing that. Um, I guess at some point I would like to do a really complicated one where we're both expanding and contracting the game at the same time. So it's like it's both ekphrasis and synthesis happening at the same time. Um, which would make for a fucking crazy game map. Like the game map would just be this messed up tangle, but the messed up tangle is actually what art history looks like. It's what all of history looks like. Um, I think that to some degree this time around, those sorts of like intellectual concerns, um, which I'm, I still love, they're a little bit on the back burner maybe. Um, in comparison to just trying to give people support through this horrible time, this horrible year, you know, like trying to give isolated people a sense of community, just trying to give people something to work on or something to instigate them or like light them up in the midst of 
this horrible time until we get through it, you know? I mean, that's, I think that second side of it is what is most animating to me right now. So, um, let's just go around the horn before we're done. We've got five minutes left. So, I'd like each of you to take a turn and just say, just, you, you are now talking to, what, 820 artists, 830 artists, something like that, in 420 cities, in 65 countries. What is, what's one thing that you would want to say to everybody that, about working on this behind the scenes? Like, anything goes. Caitlin, do you want to go first? Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, this is this is a hard one. Yeah. Um, I guess I'd like to say I hope everyone knows how much time and love and attention we're putting into this. Like, this is a lot more than a game for a lot of us. I know, like, we we pour a lot of our soul into this. Um, I know I do, at least for sure, and I'm sure the rest of us do as well, but. Yeah, like, I hope that you know that we don't just take your art and give it a passing glance. Like, I feel like I know all of you by name. I feel like I can identify your art, you know, by by memory at this point. Um, and this is something that we put a lot of work into because we want to make you proud. And we want to make you guys feel really happy with the end product. Um, and, and I think that you will. So that's what I would say. Who's next? I uh, just how how amazing I think it is that you know I I find a lot of times I'm insecure and I think it's very neat that all these artists are are putting themselves out there you know creating something um, and not really sure of how people are going to take it or or. Um, translate it like we've talked about before but where you know I, I find myself you know struggle just to put out like maybe an Instagram post or something like that you know where just a couple of my friends are really going to see but it's it is inspiring to me that all these artists are really putting their time into something and putting it out there for literally the world to see and and they jumped at the chance for it and I wish I could myself do that you know and so it, I think it, you know, um, you know, maybe I, I'll start doing that, taking taking a lesson from the uh, the artists there. But I, I think that's something I'd like to say to them that you know, that's really neat that they are willing to do that. I can say, uh, yeah. I mean, I I've just been thinking a lot. I think uh, Nathan, you talked um, at the beginning um, about a lot. Uh, just the fact that we're all so isolated and how isolated alone we all are and how this thing, we're all doing this together at around the same time. And I, uh, that really, that bounces around in my head a lot when I'm working on this, that like how many other people in this project right now are working on something in their room. Um, and you know, it's kind of helps feel a little bit together. <laughs> That's uncharacteristically uh, sentimental of me. <laughs> I guess I'll follow up with uncharacteristic sentimentality. Um, but I guess my message to artists would just be like, one, thank you for participating and for entrusting us scattered around the country and beyond with your work and um, for having faith in the project, like working and coming together and knowing you can like take a thing and translate it and send it back to us and we will eventually get back to you um, and if we miss an email we're sorry um, there's a lot of back and forth and a lot of balls in the air and if you think that we've missed something let us know um, we're flexible we're open and we appreciate you participating um, and we look forward to seeing how this all wraps up and are excited to share it with everyone I guess I'd just like to pile on with the thank you. Uh, 
behind the scenes, we have a, a Slack board, and Nathan, he's constantly posting stuff, and Caitlin, well, a bunch of people, they're just posting new art that comes in, and they're all, like, amazingly good. Uh, we all get a private art show before anyone else gets to see it, so, yeah, thanks. I forget what the prompt is. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> say anything that you want to to 800 people or more um, cool yeah make art and do it and you know what I want to say I, I'm going to get on a soapbox for a little bit but <laughs> I like that this is a no money involved enterprise because um, I think that that's always something that we should keep in mind like the importance of just community and making art and not worrying about what you're doing in terms of how it's going to make you money or like, you know, boost your status or whatever, like just do it because it makes you feel better and makes the world better. Like that's what everyone here I'm assuming is also doing. So I think that's great. And thank you. Well, I think, am I the last one here? Um, where to start? I just <laughs> want to talk about the butterfly effect. You know, we're doing something small that's going to affect thousands of people. Not, you know, the artists themselves are going to touch their friends and family, and those friends and family are going to touch other friends and family. Pretty soon we're having like this, you know, love bomb go off and all over the world with positivity, you know? And I thoroughly believe we're going to save lives by doing this. We're going to slow down somebody's day just long enough so that they don't get in the wrong car, or bike down the wrong hill, or walk home in the middle of the night. You know, just, I, even now, like, just meeting every one of you, you know, the whole reason I did this is just because I wanted to hang out with Nathan, you know? <laughs> and now I get to meet all you guys. So look at this. I'm touching lives. I didn't even know. Look at that. Look at me. I'm drinking. Anyways, that's my two bits. Butterfly fic, positivity, keep it going. Well, and I guess the uh, we're out of time for now, but um, the last thing I just wanted to say to uh, everybody watching, everybody listening, um, everybody on this call, um, I mean, we're we're all in the same boat. We're all real people. We breathe the same air, regardless of where we are on on the earth. And um, you know, I I hope that this game that we make is fun and cool. And uh, can't wait to uh, talk to all of you again. It's gonna be fun. Adios, everybody. <laughs> Silent waves.